deadly leading. The truth is that the leadership that will serve above self is not yet in your party manifesto. Whatever or wherever it has been written, it will require that important conversation that many have avoided to have about nation building. Nation builders are not account builders. Nation builders understand <laughs> that the greatness of a man or a woman does not consist in the abundance of homes they have acquired. These issues, ladies and gentlemen, are issues that economic research has proven to be the basis for the kind of great Nigeria that you seek to build. Until these issues are addressed, you would merely be engaged in wishful aspiration. Any kind of wishful aspiration is not sustainable anymore for Nigeria because the situation is dire. Of the twin maladies of corruption and poverty, some people say they are not really a big problem. After all, other countries had corruption and they developed. I don't know what script they are reading from, but the script that I read from has clearly shown that poverty and corruption are the two things that rob Nigerians of their dignity. Poverty deprives one of the basic necessities, the basic services that they need in order to preserve their self-dignity. Poor governance, on the other hand, is what poverty helps to breed. Because I know some of you are clapping, we're transcendental leaders. Because of the poverty that poor governance has bequeathed to this land, at times of election, you will rob Nigerians even further of their dignity by simply throwing a bag of rice at them. That's not transcendental. That's your business with them. They seek to hold you to a higher level of performance, no matter what your acronym is. And ladies and gentlemen, another group that are anxious to follow the path of leadership that transcends and allocates public resources to the priorities that truly diversify and structurally change this economy are the women, the most visible hidden asset for economic development. It's an oxymoron to be both visible and to be hidden. They are hidden because the policies have not enabled them to be visible. Between the youths and the women of this society, they say to the political class, Nigeria can do better. The women who constituting 50% of our population are by the records of their present achievement, all you need to do is to go to the local markets and see thriving women who are putting four children through university education. Imagine what would happen if Nigeria had provided them over the last 50 years the kind of enabling that they needed in order to compete with the rest of the world. Just imagine our, children, our women and our young ones insist 
that by their word and their action, they are demonstrating to the political class that Nigeria can do better. Another thing they say is that the return of values of hard work and the reward for creativity and innovation must define the new normal in Nigeria. They no longer want an engagement that is a conversation about reward without hard work. Citizens question the things that the political class values and rewards. They are perplexed when they watch the elite class destroy the potency of sanctions regime by rewarding bad behavior and punishing good behavior. The, the, the citizens are saying that for you, as you think about the issues of redefining what leadership moves the nation from its failures of several decades, that there are three attributes that you must be determined to find in any one person, whether they operate at the local government, or they operate at the state, or they operate at the national level, they operate at the legal, at the lawmaking level, or the executive level. Three attributes they are asking you to always remember that citizens are asking you for. Citizens are asking that the political class must be a new class of people that want to think of competency, character, and capacity. These three C's must be in every one of you that seeks to lead this nation to a new level of performance. None of the three attributes can be substituted by the other. You cannot run out and say, oh, I have great character, and yet no competency and no capacity. It would be a shipwreck. You cannot say, I have great capacity and no character and no competency. That fellow would be a great locust and would be back to where we were. You cannot say, I have great cap competency and then there is no character and no capacity. Well, that fellow will faint in the day of adversity. All of these suggest to you that you must redefine leadership as a political class across this nation. Why is it that we ignore the most important level of governance, being the local government, and we leave that which is closest to the people, and everybody keeps their eyes on Abuja, because that's where the oil money is distributed. The unwillingness of any group of political elite in this country to understand the emergent power of the office of the citizen would be a tragedy indeed. Thank you. And the blame for Nigeria's history of underdevelopment, corruption, and bad governance is placed firmly and squarely on the politicians without discrimination along party lines. Now, if the demand for a new kind of leadership, as spelled out by Dr. Ezekwesili, is lost on the assembled politicians, then it stands to reason that Nigeria may remain stuck in the rut.